Just over 13 months ago, I was standing on the Olympic podium beside my teammate Marielle, watching two Canadian flags rise up and hearing our national anthem play. It was then that I realized that all the people who had influenced my life and everything that had happened to me in the 24 years prior had brought me to that moment. But it wasn't an easy journey, and that's why today I'm going to speak with you about three steps that I've found that worked for me in overcoming the challenges of adversity through the lens of an athlete. In 2012, I was carrying momentum from a very successful 2011 season. I'd won the X Games gold medal and world championships. And in 2012, there was nothing that I wanted more than to bring home that coveted Crystal Globe, which is the award for the leader of the overall World Cup standings. The fourth race of our tour brought us to the heart of the French Alps, to a resort called Alpe d'Huez. In the last heat of the day, I found myself in fourth position, trying to make a pass on the Austrian girl in front of me. In an attempt to push the limits, the limits pushed back. I crashed. And just like this, yeah, my season was over. <laughs> so I got on a plane, flew back to Canada, got an MRI, and it turned out that I had torn the ACL in my left knee. Now, challenges can happen to us at any moment, whether we're prepared for them or not. Each and every person in this room can relate because we've all experienced adversity in some capacity, whether it be life-changing or more of just a speed bump along our journeys. As Wade Boggs says, what defines us isn't the good or bad things that happens to us. What defines us is how we react in those situations. In life, we have no control over the cards that were dealt, but we do have a choice in how we want to play those cards. We can choose to either succumb under the pressure of those hardships or to rise up and triumph in the face of that adversity. Now, there are some pros in going through these challenges. Adversity gives us an opportunity to learn. Getting on the podium feels great, but I've learned more about myself and about my skiing by making mistakes and analyzing them. Adversity also gives us an opportunity to assess where we were at before that incident and where we want to be coming out of it. Before my injury, I was mentally and physically strong. In terms of technique, my skiing was at an all-time high, and most importantly, I was really enjoying what I was doing. Coming out of this, I wanted to be all that, but better. So, in getting over these challenges, the key to success begins with believing in your own ability to achieve excellence. That's step one. Step two is all about surrounding yourself with positive people. Now, ski cross, like many of life's endeavors, is an individual pursuit. But without a team to support us, us athletes would have a very challenging time getting on the top tier of that podium. Now, in our team, each individual plays an important role. And each individual role is just as important as the next. There's so much power and energy within a team. Teams provide an opportunity for us to build momentum off of each other. An individual's positive attitude and success can literally snowball to the success of the other members within that team. During a bad day, a team can also provide support to help mitigate the effects of a poor performance. In coming back from my injury, I relied on my fellow teammates for guidance and support to help build my confidence literally from run to run. Together with my coaches and trainers and physios, we made a progressive back to racing, which we jokingly called back to winning plan, which was challenging yet realistic. So at the end of the day, even though one person can stand on that top tier of that podium, I can guarantee you that there's at least 100 more who directly influenced that person's success. 
when a solid team is in place, nobody has to go at it alone. In coming back from this injury, I was dealing with physical and mental hurdles. I was tentative, nervous, unsure. I basically had a lot of questions without a lot of answers. You know, was my knee going to be able to withstand racing again? Was I going to be thinking about my injury going down that course? Was I going to be as good coming away from this injury as I had been going into it? To get better, I had to allow myself to be vulnerable. I had to move outside of my traditional comfort zone and redefine what my new normal was going to be. And to get there, I had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So if you're serious about bettering yourself or getting to that next level, you can't be afraid to ask for help. As an athlete, this can be challenging because it feels like you're admitting to a weakness or admitting to defeat. It can feel like a blow to your self-esteem and ego, and this is something that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you do, we try to protect. So I've learned that in order to grow, you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. And that doesn't mean that you're being weak. It simply means that you're giving yourself the best opportunity to succeed, even if that means that you have to take a step outside of your comfort zone. So in step three, it's all about making a plan, seeing it through, and never giving up. In March of 2013, we were at the World Championships in Voss, Norway. This was an important race for me because I was coming in as the defending world champion, and it also acted as a qualifier for the upcoming 2014 Olympics. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to compete because I crashed in training. Although we didn't know the extent of my injuries at the time, we had a pretty sinking feeling that I had retorn the ACL in my left knee. So I got back on the plane, headed to Canada, feeling completely and utterly defeated. But I made a promise to myself that I would do everything in my power to get on that Olympic team for the next season. I wanted to be part of the team who collectively identified themselves as fierce, unstoppable, invincible, inspired, and stoked. So in terms of goal setting, I had figured out the what. That was pretty easy, but now it was time to figure out the how. The upside about having gone through the injury once before is that I already knew what it was going to feel like and what to expect. I already had a good idea of the things that had worked the year before and maybe the things that we could leave to the side. So together with my coaches and physios and trainers, we created a plan to get my body in peak physical condition so it could withstand landing from 70 foot jumps. So it could hold up, dealing with three Gs of force in a turn, all while racing head to head with three other unpredictable girls, traveling between 60 and 80 kilometers an hour. The catch on this was that we only had 11 months to get there. Having worked with a sports psych during my first rehab, I knew the importance that it would play coming into this one too. All the emotions that I was feeling my first time around, you know, the uncertainty, the nerves, it was as if they were jacked up on steroids for round two. Part of the reason was because the biggest race of my life was coming up. And another part of the reason is that I only had one shot to get it right. I only had 11 months to do it perfectly. That's when she introduced me to this well-known technique called the MAC approach, which is an anagram that stands for mindful, accepting, and committed. In coming back to racing, I had to be mindful of all these emotions that I was feeling. I had to accept that it was completely normal, and I had to be committed with the plan that we had put in place. I had to invest my heart and soul into that plan and have faith that it was all going to work out. So setting goals is fantastic because it gives us a specific and measurable task to work towards. But what's even more important is creating that plan for how exactly we're going to get from here to there. Once that plan is in place, 
you have to be brave enough to commit to the process and take that step forward and move outside of that comfort zone. So now, fast forward 11 months, I'm standing in the start gate at the 2014 Winter Olympics. I'm feeling confident because my team and I had taken advantage of every opportunity that came our way. More than that, we made our own advantages. All the hard work, literally the blood, sweat, and the tears had been done, and now it was time to execute. To stay present in the moment for me was going to be key. Every time I started to think about how wonderful it would feel to stand on that Olympic podium, representing my country, proud and strong, I use that as a trigger to think back to the process. How exactly was I going to get through each of these rounds on race day to the finals and then to make that step onto the podium? Back to this Mac approach here. I had to be mindful that I was still dealing with a lot of the effects of my injury from the last two years. I had to accept that even though this was the biggest race of my life, my body wasn't at 100%. But I was committed in offering 100% of whatever my body would provide me with on that day, and that I was going to fight to the very end and literally put it all on the table. The semifinals in ski cross is a critical turning point, assuming that you make it this far. It decides who's going to go on to the big finals and have a shot at competing for the medal positions, and who's going to go to the consolation round, which feels like the equivalent of receiving a gold star and someone patting you on the back and saying, good job, thanks for coming out. <laughs> My semifinal round at the Olympics was anything but conventional. I pull out of the start, I'm a little bit behind, so I'm in fourth position. I'm thinking about my poor parents at the bottom, stressing. But halfway through the course, I make a pass. So now I'm in third position. Keep in mind, top two girls are going to move on to the finals. In the last turn of the race, one girl is way out in front. And there's three of us neck and neck. It's anybody's race. But there are many paths to success. There's always the direct path, which is nice and easy. Or there's the indirect path which may see a person literally like veering in and out of course. Just have faith that if you happen to be on that indirect path, know that there's still an opportunity for you to reach your goal and succeed. All you have to do is stay committed and fight to the very end. We all face adversity in life, but we have to remember that it's not what happens to us, it's how we react to what happens to us that matters. In coming back from these challenges, Believe in yourself. Then build a solid team who can go out and facilitate, support, and guide your journey. Then make a plan, see it through, and never give up. Everyone's aware of the question of whether you're a person who sees the glass as half empty or half full. But the important thing here to realize is that that glass can always be filled back up. So in closing, I'd like to leave you with a quote from one of my favorites, Dr. Seuss. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose.